I've never played a Castlevania game. Nor have I ever gone far in any 2D Metroid game. I don't know what it is about these labyrinth 2D side-scrollers that just don't seem to captivate me. So when I tell you that Hollow Knight is the king of Metroidvanias, you should ask yourself, now why did I buy it? Well, it's because the main character is cute. This is how I pick what games I play. What captivates me about Hollow Knight is the world you're tasked with exploring. In a game like Kirby, the parts that stand out are those unusually dark and eerie environments. I remember the final levels of Kirby 64 totally changing its mood with how dark and dreary everything was. In Hollow Knight, it's the complete opposite, where the lighter environments really captivated me. You start in this unimpressing first area and are immediately taken to the locations that carry the imagination of this game. My favorite, just for the aesthetic alone, is the green path. The music is so whimsical, the enemies look harmless, but they will instantly take you out if you let your guard down. And if you keep exploring long enough, you'll reach this luminous path, which turns out to be a whole new area filled with acid water and explosive jellyfish. Damn! Another thing I love are these enemy and boss designs. Most are taken from already existing bogs and insects, but if you are original, you get to this area with mantises everywhere, and they try and take you out until you reach their village, and at one point you find a secret area where their leaders are, and once you beat them, not only do you earn their respect, but every mantis enemy that you pass will now bow to you instead of fight. It's these little details that make finding these secrets so rewarding, but that does raise a big problem. They have pointless NPCs. I'll reach a room dedicated to this one bug that just talks to you and nothing else. It honestly demoralizes finding these friendly creatures that not only give you nothing, but they just don't really serve a purpose. On that note, there really is only one town, Dirtmouth, and again, it doesn't serve as much as a purpose as it should. I expected all my shops and venues to be available in one place, but actually they're located at random locations around the map, and it really doesn't help that the fast travel system is the exact opposite of fast. One time I was in the Queen's Grove when I got over 500 spirits, so I had to find the nearest stag station, run all the way over to it, fast travel to the resting grounds, where I received a pale ore as my reward. So now, I have to fast travel to the King Station, so I run all the way to the Nailsmith, only to find out I don't have enough Geo. I then walk all the way back to the fast travel, to where the banker is, so I can make a withdrawal, and then I gotta go all the way back to the damn Nailsmith. This stupid trip across the whole map could have been avoided if everything was in one area, like, I don't know, Dirt Mouth. Then there's this one side quest where you take a flower literally across the map without taking any damage or fast traveling. Needless to say, I said, fuck that, and I still have yet to complete it. The open world and freedom to choose where you go is more than welcoming and it's fun as hell. Until you get to that part where you have no clue where to go. This happened to me a few times. I'd reach a new area, but then be halted by something I couldn't do about. Then the mission turns into... Now where the hell do I get that ability? The bosses in the game are mostly fun to face. They range from hard but fair to, eh, let's just stick six of these fuckers in one room cuz LMAO. As much as I died, I honestly wasn't as mad as I would be in a game where I'd have depleting lives. When you die, your spirit remains with all your cash. In the last spot you died. Luckily, once you get your spirit back, it's almost like nothing ever happened and you can try again. Now, every once in a while, there's a boss that's super hard and really far away from a bench. So now, whenever I die, I have to spend more time hauling ass back to where I died than I do actually facing the fucker that killed me. Hollow Knight did not feel hollow at all. It has depth, character, and an overall beauty with it. It does have a few technical flaws and oversights that I hope get tweaked in Silk Song. But if you've yet to play this game, it's 15 bucks.